The um, pump from 6800 to about 70 250 in that about 15 minutes we liquidated about 230 million US dollars worth of short positions um, but bear in mind that we're a futures market so for every long there's a short so there's not an imbalance of shorts per se but many people probably entered a position at around the same levels which is why we probably got a little pop there. Do you think that we've seen the worst for, for Bitcoin this year? I don't actually think we've seen the worst. Uh, I think this is a very strong rally on you know, good volume, and we definitely could see 8,000, 9,000, and maybe just shy of 10,000. We've been here before earlier in the spring. We rallied from about 5,800 to uh, in the high 9,000 level, but didn't quite crack 10,000. I think similar action will happen this time, and I would like to see us test 5,000 to really see if we put a bottom in. Do you think we'll see more volatility? I mean, that's really what traders want to see, right? And that's what's good for your business. Volatility either up or down. Absolutely. And given that it's the summer and everyone's in the Hamptons or the uh, French Riviera or in Asia and Bali, uh, I think people are taking a little bit of a chill time. Come back into Q3, Q4 is when I think the party's going to start again. Hey, Arthur, it's BK. So you're talking about an awful lot of volume going through your exchanges. U.S. citizens can't trade on your exchange. So what's the character of the person who's trading on BitMEX? And are you seeing a change in that? So we're primarily a North Asian uh, platform. And as I've said many times, the penetration of Internet, the penetration of mobile makes it a fertile ground for digital currencies. And you also have a great culture of gaming uh, where, where I live. So that's why we've seen the majority of our customers come from that region. And in general, if you look at the largest exchanges in the world by trading volume, they all are in North Asia. Everybody's at the Hamptons or on their yacht. I thought this I was a that. different kind of crowd, oh, Arthur. Fantastic. Decentralized, you know, power to the people kind of crowd. Power to the people doesn't exist on yachts. I guess it does. Um, well, but I guess it, it depends on who can get on the yacht. I guess it's true. Uh, in terms of volumes, though, where are we? I mean, relative to the peak volumes that you probably saw back in December, where are we in terms of getting that volume back? So for BitMEX, at least, we've actually expanded our share of the market um, in 2018. And we actually had our best month in March. But definitely for the uh, spot exchanges that don't have any leverage, the peak volumes were in December. And I think we've seen them pick back up slightly. We'll definitely see volumes increase if we continue this rally. But as I said, I think through a third and fourth quarter has generally been a very positive time for Bitcoin because everyone's come back from their summer vacation. All right, Arthur, we're going to leave it there. Great to speak with you. Thanks for having me. Arthur Hayes, otherwise known as Mr. GQ of crypto, or at least henceforth known as that. Henceforth, I like that. That's like fourth. That's like a guy kind of word. Henceforth. Henceforth. Yeah. I like old timey. Oh, yeah, it's old timey. I think his commentary is pretty interesting. You know, when he thinks, when, when you ask the question, has it bottomed? He says, well, no, I think that maybe yeah. there's a test of the 5,000. When you look at that Q1 rally after that huge decline, it had a 100% rally. And then mm -hmm. it came back in and made a new low. And then in the Q2 rally, it was 50%. So here we are, really quietly up 25, almost almost 30 percent in Bitcoin. And it's a kind of interesting point. If it doesn't hold, it's going to make a new low and it's probably going back to that 5000 level, round tripping the whole move from last October. Hey, got a quick question for you. BK, yeah, because that's Barry, that's Silver was, Barry Silver was sitting there next to us yesterday and I thought the most intriguing thing, and I know that was nice of you to retweet what he said. Yesterday, he pointed out that 50 percent is in Bitcoin and then he's got it spread across multiple other currencies. Mm -hmm. So how do you view how you invest in this whole crypto world that the rest of us still are trying to put our arms around. So I, I, I think that I look at it and say there's probably going to be a half dozen to a dozen coins um, that actually are the foundational protocols of this ecosystem. So let's say Bitcoin's your currency, perhaps Ethereum's your smart contract platform, maybe we'll have a governance platform, but we'll have a bunch of different currencies interacting with each other as foundation to Web 3.0, which I know you guys have talked about a lot. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.